Hypnotic brainwashing. It's not the pain that's bad, it's the suffering that's bad. Skin branding. Celebrity groupies. Even murder. These are just some of the rumors surrounding the Nexium story. And at the center is ringleader Keith Ranieri. People were constantly being manipulated. They were constantly being controlled. But how much of this is actually true? We give things meaning. Justice is something we earn. For the first time, former Nexium members speak out and expose the real truth behind the cult's disturbing tales of sex, slavery, and torture. Not only that there's a person there in the moment, but somehow you, you reach into their very essence and you, you meet a unique individual. I don't know why, that makes me want to cry. It's beautiful. Keith Ranieri, the leader of the little-known wellness cult the world has now come to know as Nexium. I'm very devilish, and I, I think I'm probably the worst coach in the world because I, I'm just a demon. Ranieri may seem charming and harmless, but when he's arrested in Mexico on June 19, 2019, rumors of Keith Ranieri's sinister intentions come to light. The leader of an alleged sex cult has been arrested in Mexico. Keith Rainier is expected to face a judge in Texas today. He's charged with federal sex trafficking. One rumor? Supposedly, Rainier could control his followers with just the sound of his voice. In interacting with you, with the Tourette's, I was wondering how I was coming across. After a certain amount of time, I had overcome Tourette syndrome. That was incredible. Investigative journalist Frank Parlato once worked for Nexium as their publicist, but was fired when he accused Ranieri of embezzling more than $90 million. Ranieri wanted to destroy me. It was either me or him. So I became a journalist. My goal was to expose Nexium. Frank has connections to many former Nexium members. Hey! <laughs> who have opened up to him about their experiences under Keith Ranieri's control. Nexium attorneys employed different private investigators to get information on individuals and said that it was perfectly legal. Well, it was perfectly legal. Getting information on, on people. One individual claims that Keith Ranieri was a master hypnotist. Keith was very expert at subliminal suggestion, hypnosis, and very, very subtle techniques about psychology, indoctrination, influence, religion, and I think he really perfected this method. I'm gonna have you do something with your left hand, your right hand, and then I'm gonna ask you to do the hard thing. I, I do this, it's, and we, it's with a twisted sense of, of pleasure. We have a very unique, specific methodology to do this. What you really got as a student was something far different than what was promised. What the classes were were nothing more than a super sophisticated hypnotic induction program. And the secret suggestion was follow Keith Ranieri. Keith obviously had an aura around him that was promoted by the people around him so that when you met him, you were already primed to experience him in a certain way. It's the same as if your friend says, oh my God, you aren't gonna believe this, the guru is gonna come and the guru is gonna lift himself off the chair and then you go to the meeting and all these people think the guru lifted himself off the chair and that's a very known psychological effect. It's not new and innovative, it's mostly NLP. NLP, or Neural Linguistic Programming, is a means of manipulating people without their informed consent. It's based on reading them, their body language, their breathing rhythm, the way in which they are most likely to be influenced by a certain way of painting a picture verbally. People get into roles and the roles are mutually reinforcing. As many narcissists do and as many cult leaders do and as many sociopaths do, he had the ability to read people and to tap into what spoke to them, and he could build that rapport, and it made him seem special. Even ask the question, is this, is this thing alive? Is this thing thinking? Okay. 
This was an incredibly fear-driven environment. I think if anybody ever studies this thing, they're gonna find that people were going for years with elevated stress hormones throughout the whole time. A lot of it was more of a control strategy, a way to have control over women. And I think for Keith, it's in his nature. He wants to catch the mouse, he wants to torture it, he wants to play with it, that kind of thing. So, was Keith Ranieri a master hypnotist? Yes. It may sound far-fetched, but Ranieri used hypnotism to indoctrinate Nexium followers. The so-called self-help guru allegedly coerced women into having sex with him and also branded them as part of an initiation ceremony. The arrest of Nexium sex cult leader Keith Ranieri in June 2019 all begins with Canadian actress Sarah Edmondson. In October of 2017, Sarah goes public with her shocking story, that she allowed herself to be branded at Keith Ranieri's urging. Her story triggers a massive investigation and manhunt, ending with Ranieri's arrest and finally his conviction in June of 2019. During his trial, disturbing stories of a secret sex cult are exposed. Perhaps one of the most alarming rumors is that Keith Ranieri branded all of his followers. He wanted to impose his will on people and control people. He mandated this torturing of women. He branded them. He scarred them for life. And I think he took pleasure in that. Sometimes desperate situations require desperate measures. When stories of branding begin leaking out, other former Nexium members speak up to support the claims. So many people were upset and leaving. People were coming out validating some of the accusations about things that were happening. Basically, they lied about it. And it wasn't just one person lying. It seems like it was a whole group of people lying to keep a cover in place. This is what's always hard for people to understand, how someone can get indoctrinated to that degree. But you're in a closed system, what I call a bounded reality. A bounded reality where Ranieri radicalized his followers. His first step, separate the men from the women. Keith started Jeunesse, which was a woman's group, where they would tell you that it was going to help you be more successful in life, be a more successful human being within yourself. That's what I thought it was designed to do. And what better way to do this than through celebrity? His most prized recruit, Allison Mack. Keith targeted Allison Mack because of her celebrity status, because she's such a sweet-looking young girl, you know, who would not trust her. And people have said this to me. I joined because of Allison Mack. What do I want to be remembered? I want to be remembered for my joy. I want to be remembered for my spirit. Here's where the real evil begins. Along with other top Nexium women, Allison helps Keith Ranieri lure Jeunesse members into a smaller group within Nexium called DOS. DOS stands for dominant over submissive. The Latin was dominus obsequious sequorum. DOS was the master-slave order that was created within Nexium. And it was headed by Lauren Salzman, by Allison Mack, but ultimately it was Keith Ranieri's creation and he was the ultimate authority over DOS. In order to join, the women are required to contribute a steep initiation fee, what Keith calls collateral. Collateral is a way to enslave people into staying within Nexium. They tried to collect collateral on me by trying to get me to have sex outside of my relationship, by naked photos, false letters about family members. When you submit your monthly collateral to me, you will upload it to a Dropbox file I just shared with you called Collateral. You will label it in a file which includes your initials and the date submitted. Once women submit their collateral, they become a part of DOS, and the real horrors begin. Keith takes advantage of their vulnerability to groom some DOS members for sex. I think Keith was just using the DOS group to fulfill his own desires, his own fantasies, his own shortcomings, his own insecurities. Eventually, even sexual relations aren't enough for Ranieri. He wants to own them. 
the challenge became how far could I push my students to do my will no matter what. Uh, we saw the most obvious examples were the human branding. Ranieri even uses Allison Mack as a sounding board as he creates this insidious plan. Keeping Allison January 9th, 6.59 a.m. talking about branding the wall. Do you think the person who's being branded should be completely nude and sort of held to the table like a, sort of almost like a sacrifice? I don't know if that, that's a feeling of submission. And the person should ask to be branded. Okay. Should say, please brand me, it would be an honor, or something like that. Okay. DAS was the secret sorority for women where the branding took place. The people who were getting branded didn't know Keith was the mastermind behind this whole thing. Only the few at the top, Allison, Lauren, etc., knew that all the directions were coming from Keith. Those being branded are told it'll be an ancient Latin symbol. But Keith Ranieri has one last cruel trick up his sleeve. It can look like a symbol until you know what to look for. Once you've seen the photograph, yeah, yeah, it's K-R. Keith Ranieri, this is not what you do to human beings unless you think you own them. Keith has this need to, to mark. Keith wanted to mark people as his property. Ultimately, Keith achieves his heinous dream of domination and ownership, a dream that leaves some members of DOS permanently scarred, mind, body, and soul. He branded women. He didn't just rape them. He didn't just demean them. He branded women. So were all members of Nexium branded? No. Although branding did occur, this painful ritual was reserved for select members of DOS. Nexium's influence stretched globally, and as it grew, so did Keith's power. But like most narcissists, he craved more. Legitimacy on the world stage. And what better way than with an endorsement from the Dalai Lama? Keith saw the Dalai Lama as a conduit to give himself more legitimacy. I think that was part of his megalomania. That was part of his delusion. Rumors circulate that the Dalai Lama has ties to Nexium. How could Ranieri pull off an audience with the Dalai Lama? The answer was the Bronfman sisters, Claire and Sara, heiresses to the Seagram's liquor empire. When Keith met the Bronfman sisters, he saw them as easy targets and easy marks. Sarah and Claire come from a very wealthy family, but they were the second set of children, so they did not have the, the father figure in their lives, so Keith became that father figure. In a 2009 radio interview, Nexium member Sara Bronfman identifies a connection between her master and the revered holy man. About two and a half years ago, I heard His Holiness speaking, and I thought to myself, wow, that kind of sounds like what we do. Um, and I thought to myself, you know, maybe I could meet him, and maybe I could, you know, uh, introduce him to, you know, the, the things that we're teaching here and introduce him to Keith, because I think that Keith is a scientist and His Holiness is a, a great humanitarian. As with Allison Mack, Ranieri recognized an unprecedented opportunity with the Bronfman sisters. In this case, access to power and nearly endless cash. Keith was trying to snow her with his brilliance so she would keep putting money into the operation. Keith recruited the rich, the famous, the beautiful into the organization of Nexia to recruit. You like Smallville? Oh. There's an actress over there. You like chess? There's a chess master over in the corner. Richard Branson, you know him? He loves us. He took our class. He's amazing. But there was one powerful celebrity Keith couldn't reach, the Dalai Lama. For Keith Raniere to be on a stage with Dalai Lama is like the be all and end all of being a, a credible, legitimate uh, spiritual being. In 2007, Sara Bronfman makes Keith's dream a reality securing the Dalai Lama's presence the old-fashioned way. From everything that I've read and all the people I've talked to, the Dalai Lama was actually paid a million dollars, and that's what finally convinced him to come and be on a stage with Keith Raniere. Once again, Raniere uses his followers to achieve another twisted fantasy. One of the first times I ever met Keith and Claire, they said, hey, you know, yeah, Dalai Lama came and visited us. He loves us. And that was a big PR piece that they put together to make sure that if you started to question something, they would be like, no, 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 no. The Dalai Lama says we're okay. 
So, did the Dalai Lama have ties with Nexium? No. Although the photo op with the Dalai Lama provides Keith the legitimacy he sought, the revered monk's ties to Nexium were purely transactional. The truth about Keith Ranieri's reign of terror in Nexium will continue to unfold over time. He manipulates and uses and abuses people. But his dangerous and disgusting behavior leads some to wonder what else he's capable of.